Big Sandy, Montana. Population, just under 600. The closest hospital, 35 miles away. People who needed routine health care had to drive 70 to 80 miles round trip or forego it altogether. All that changed when the Big Sandy Medical Center opened. Patients come here for physicals How are you today? and to be treated for everything from the flu and asthma to diabetes and broken bones. Deep breath. What they treat at this center is not all that unusual. Who provides the treatment? Well, that is. We do not have any physicians at our clinic. We do have a physician that comes in uh, once a week and that is available via uh, telephone to consult on cases. Steve Arnold is a family nurse practitioner. He, along with another nurse practitioner, supervise the day-to-day -day care at the center. Mid-levels, such as myself and physician's assistants, are becoming a much more uh, important part of the healthcare delivery model. Nurse practitioners can assess patients, formulate diagnoses, develop and implement treatment plans, they order lab tests, diagnostic tests, they prescribe medications. They are prepared to provide a full scope of primary care services. We are the ones now that are available 24 hours a day to these patients. Nurses are usually there when we enter this world and as we prepare to leave it. Since Florence Nightingale laid the foundation of professional nursing in the 19th century, nurses have been the mainstay of our healthcare system. As that system strains under today's increasing pressures, nurses are taking on a whole new role in terms of the health of our nation. Far more than just doctor's assistants, today's nurses serve as primary care providers. They have advanced degrees. They are considered scientists and innovators. They are change agents in today's new world of healthcare. Nursing is an evolving and increasingly important part of the delivery of health care. There's three million nurses in the United States. We're always the most important because of the size and the breadth and the depth of what we do. I don't think you ever see the full uh, dim dimensions of nursing. There are roles that are around now that weren't there when I was a new nurse, like a nurse navigator to help people with the complexity of our health care system. We clearly have, as nurses, a unique knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to provide to people at really vulnerable times in their lives. Continue to monitor all the medicine that you're taking. You know, times when they're facing life and death situations. Nursing is the number one most respected, trusted, and admired profession. Society has great expectations for this profession, but it also says to the profession, we're counting on you. you know, if not you, who else can we really uh, trust and count on um, to make sure that all these changes that we're going to go through in this decade, you'll be uh, our watchdog. Nurses need to be leading the transformation of healthcare. Nurses are the only profession who really provide care everywhere in the healthcare system. It's really not about nurses, it's about the people they serve. And without those nurses, those people won't get what they need. In every single newspaper, you can read a health-related story where you could see that engaging a nurse at all or engaging a nurse differently would have made a huge impact. Every one of those problems has a nursing solution. In Vermont, nurses are helping physicians improve patient care while saving time and money. One of the biggest issues is time for any medical provider. So the way physicians are, um, you know, paid is per visit. And for most visits, it's 10, maybe 15 minutes. A physical is a half an hour. But when you have a person with a, uh, several chronic issues, that 10 minute visit now turned into 45 minutes. So that isn't something the physicians have time to do. There's some other side effects that could happen with a high blood pressure. In the Vermont Blueprint for Health model, nurses spend time with the patients. 
They discover their needs and then work with primary care providers to manage and improve the patient's condition. Just trying to get your blood pressure under a little bit controlled there. Normally we see patients at their doctor's office or their nurse practitioner's office, whoever they see to provide their medical care, which is great for patients because they don't have to go to a different place and it really helps them understand that we really are part of their medical practice team. Is there any great disability since her fall? Yes. Our team has registered nurses, registered dietitians, health coaches and medical social workers so we really have the expertise to provide what that patient needs. Okay. We've been at this for five years now and we've really seen um, some great outcomes. In fact, this approach has reduced emergency room visits and readmission rates and has helped patients improve their body mass index and blood sugar and cholesterol levels. A little bit about diet and exercise. And the increased time nurses spend with the patients is one reason for the improved outcomes. Technology is another. The electronic health record has made our work really much easier. Now that we have that in real time, we can tell the physician or other provider what's going on with their patient. Making any progress there? Have you thought about kind of heading down the road a little bit at all? The technology and the new medications and the advanced interventions are allowing us to take care of people in the home. It's allowing us to keep people out of the hospital. We need to re-prepare ourselves as nurses, not just to think of care in hospitals, but also care in homes, care in workplaces, and care in transitional places, short-stay rehabilitation centers. More and more pharmacies are placing registered nurses in their setting, and so nurses are beginning to provide that first line of intervention and care. The future of nursing um, is headed into the community. It's really where patients want to be taken care of. So it really is a paradigm shift. And it's really, I think, allowing doctors to do what they've been trained to do and what they do best. Take some nice deep breaths for me. One of the surprise benefits is that we have physicians saying, you know, if you take away my community health team, I'm not going to practice medicine anymore. And we never thought that would be the case. As nurses take on more responsibilities, they drive increasingly innovative solutions. But finding new ways to improve patient care has long been a part of the nursing tradition. OK, you definitely went 16. OK, thank you very much for clarifying. The intensive care unit was actually an innovation of nursing. It was a registered nurse working for the Department of Veterans Affairs who was actually returning a rental car. And when they scanned a barcode, she had this aha moment when she recognized that that barcode technology could be used to scan the patient and scan the medication to make sure that every single time the right medication was given to the right patient. In Spokane, Washington, a nurse is combining decades of experience with technological know-how to enhance the care of premature babies. The baby was born 12 weeks prematurely and she's been with us now for four days. From the day they are born, infants can feel pain. And it's harder for them to recuperate. Yes. You know, the impact of pain in the premature infant is tremendous. The soup of chemicals that's released when the pain experience is triggered in the infant is actually uh, pretty harmful uh, to the brain uh, development. So if we can assess pain, if we can detect it, and if we can treat it, it will hopefully prevent serious long-term damages that are associated with uh, unrelieved pain. Today, pain in a newborn can only be assessed through observation. Martin Scavenato and his team are developing a system that will constantly monitor and assess pain levels in infants. Infants in the NICU are generally uh, hooked up to a, a cardiac monitor. Our device takes that cardiac signal from the cardiac monitor and processes it. We also use the finger splaying sensor, which is a, a sign of the stress, and a method to capture facial grimacing. The three signals are fed into the machine, and uh, the machine then calculates or outputs a pain score. It's an innovative approach. Nurses are innovators simply by the way they approach their jobs, by bringing efficiency. It doesn't have to be the most uh, important, the most uh, cutting edge change. It's small, simple changes that improve the care for the patient, that improve the work environment for the staff. Nursing's a little bit like the gasket. 
Gaskets are these things that fit between hard places. Yay. Nurses fill the spaces that need to be filled. If there's a need, they're there. If there's something that hasn't been discovered, they look to find out about it. So much has changed for the nursing profession over the years. Frequently, people think of physician care or medical care, and they think of nursing as kind of a subset of physician care. And in reality, it's a bit more like the Venn diagram that you learned about in high school math. There's physician care and their knowledge and expertise, and then there's nursing care and that knowledge and expertise. There's a place in the middle that it overlaps. But there's a whole realm of knowledge and expertise that nurses have in a really unique way. Physicians may have viewed healthcare as really all about sort of individual uh, capability and, and, and expertise and, and probably didn't pay um, as much attention as they needed to uh, about what was actually happening at the bedside. There is a growing and I think pretty general understanding that the model today is that nurses are a partner in healthcare. I think medicine has gone from a more hierarchical system to a more horizontal flat system where nurses um, have become more of a valued member of the team. One of the challenges about team delivered care is how we pay for care. We don't pay for teams. We live in a system of healthcare delivery that doesn't recognize teams as an entity. It only recognizes individuals. Individuals are paid for doing care. Well, how do you measure care? Is it a particular procedure? Is it consoling somebody? Is it just merely being present? That's always been a very difficult problem for us as nurses, as a profession, to define. How do we measure uh, uh, what we're worth? Nobody can own all the knowledge to deliver good health care. That it, it actually does take a village. It does take multiple people with multiple sets of knowledge, skills, competencies to deliver good care. And sometimes it will be the nurse who will lead, sometimes the nurse will be the follower. In other instances, the physical therapist may need to be out front. In other instances, it may be the pharmacist or it may be my physician colleague. Everybody else that's part of the care team comes in and out in the care process, and the nurse is really the continuity um, in the care of the patient. Do you think you can have someone do a home visit? Yes. Great. This is a real model of collaboration here. Now you have this multidisciplinary team that works together really on behalf of the patient, and the patient is part of that team. We discuss things, we disagree with each other, but we always push each other and we, we learn from one another among our team. Um, and that only benefits the patient. Hi, Katie. I have some of the medicine I was telling you about. Nurses at the bedside really provide an extraordinary amount of continuity. Um, they're in the best position to be able to, in many ways, assess whether a particular treatment is working or not working. They're the glue. They keep the doctor informed. They keep everything rolling. 118 over 60. Oh, we're doing Beautiful. all right on that. Yeah. The demand for care becomes even more urgent as the nation's baby boomers turn 65 at an average of 11,000 a day. We have a tsunami on our hands. We have right now about 30 million people who are 65 years and older. By 2030, that number is going to grow to more than 70 million. That means more people, more demand for care. We also have the passage of health care reform. More people will receive uh, health insurance coverage or be able to afford it, potentially up to 32 million people. So that will add further demand for nurses. And then on top of that, we have the obesity uh, epidemic, the numbers of people with diabetes, heart disease. All of that will increasingly require more and more nurses. Nice big flow. But nurses may soon be in short supply because many of those aging baby boomers are nurses. Because of the current economy, nurses have stayed in their jobs. They haven't retired when they have typically retired in the past. And in fact, um, many um, nurses have come back into the field. We're talking about close to a million nurses who are over the age of 50 more than a third of our workforce. When you look out ahead 5, 10, 20 years from now, you see two things happening. One is those nurses are going to be retiring eventually. And secondly, there is going to be a huge influx of people needing nursing care. 
Predictions of a nursing shortage range from 250,000 to 500,000 nurses over the next 10 to 15 years. Many people stand ready to step in, but it's not that seamless. We have many more prospective students who want to be nurses than we have seats for them in the classrooms and in clinical sites. And that is because right now we have a shortage of faculty. One patient, one family, important but low. The nursing profession now needs more nurses to become educators, like Susan Cole Malone. Caused by lifestyle behaviors. I started off working in acute care, and then from that I kind of quickly transitioned to doing outpatient type of work, and then I went into a nurse faculty position. Four years ago, Susan took her commitment to nursing education to an even higher level. I'm a PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm in my fourth year. It was my opportunity to connect with people who were really on the cutting edge of the work that I wanted to be involved in. To help them be healthier or to do better. The complexity of what nurses need to know is increasing. The challenges that nurses face are becoming greater. But opportunity comes with some high costs. Becoming a full-time student means a lot of time away from her family. It also meant she had to quit her job. The challenge for people to become nurse educators is the time and the cost. Many people who are working uh, full time, um, the cost is prohibitive to suddenly take time off from work, um, uh, go toward a doctorate degree, which is what you really need in order to be prepared as a nurse educator. Okay. Sorry. But Susan was eligible for a nurse faculty loan. That really made this dream become a reality because that was able to keep me going full time in the PhD program and not have to break off and, and work to provide an added income for the family. Being a nurse practitioner requires uh, an advanced degree. Being a teacher requires an advanced degree. Working in the community autonomously um, requires an advanced degree and caring for people in this very complex scenario we call the US healthcare system requires as much education as possible. You have to simultaneously educate nurses to deliver care in the current system and prepare nurses with their education to be delivering care in a transformed healthcare system. The individual nurse today, I think, really needs to ask themselves, am I the best that I can become? And if not, how do I acquire that? So what are some of the things In addition like to, to teaching through? patient care, today's colleges and universities also have to prepare nurses okay. to deal with the business of healthcare. More than ever before, it's important for nurses to understand at a policy level how the healthcare system works. Reimbursement, credentialing, licensure, certification. Giving people an understanding of the business of healthcare, that's the only way we're gonna be able to be a part of the conversations and actually assume those leadership roles. It is, healthcare is a business. Leadership development is extremely important for tomorrow's nurse, for the future of nursing, because for the challenges that we're gonna be facing, we certainly are going to need strong leadership. But before they can become leaders, too many nurses get frustrated by the bureaucracy that takes time and resources away from patient care. Are we wasting resources in nursing? Absolutely. When you have a nurse that might be spending only 25% of her time delivering care and 75% of her time, as is the case in some settings, doing things that don't require her expertise, then you've wasted 75% of a nurse. This is Steve Arnold, nurse practitioner from Big Sandy. You saw my desk yesterday. I mean, it was just covered with medication refills, denials from pharmacies saying this patient's insurance won't cover this medication. I think it's important for those of us who are leaders to think of ways to remove barriers and to improve efficiency so that the nurses are really spending their time on prof professional practice and not spending their time um, on inefficient tasks. In many communities, nurses play leading roles in delivering quality, affordable health care. But in others, barriers are preventing nurses from doing all they can do to help patients. One of the biggest barriers to nurses functioning at, its, at their highest level are the state regulations and laws about how nurses should practice. We're not getting the full talent and benefit out of that nurse, which 
We could if the law or the states would change their scope of practice to allow that to happen. Very sadly, in some of those states where the laws are really, really restrictive, nurses are going to nurse practitioner school and then they're leaving the state, which leaves their patients in a big lurch. There are some insurance companies that won't pay a nurse practitioner uh, reimbursement or reimbursement to the hospital if they're seen by a nurse practitioner. These are barriers that are artificial, they're barriers that make no sense, and they're, they're barriers that are very costly. There has been the time where we've been able to uh, suture the wound, but we didn't have the authority to, to actually administer the medication that's needed to uh, make the patient comfortable while we were suturing. That's ridiculous. Fundamental changes in how health care is delivered were going to occur, with or without the Affordable Care Act. The concerns about costs, the concerns about quality, the concerns about access meant that care had to be delivered differently and different people had to be a part of that. I think what's happening around the reform or the transformation of health care delivery is a greater opportunity for nurses to be part of designing care, a greater opportunity for nurses to be leading in that care transformation. To see what kind of impact nurses are making, watch Kathy Pounds on her daily routine for a national nonprofit organization. Nurse Family Partnership is a program for low-income first-time moms. We enroll the moms early in the pregnancy and follow them until their babies are two years old. The amount of time that I get the opportunity to spend with that mom and her extended family is really different than other types of nursing because they're not just in and out. They're not just my patient for the day. Um, she's my client for a two and a half year period. Decades of data confirm that this level of nursing care makes a difference, a big difference. Statistics show that there are fewer ER visits and less instances of child abuse and neglect. But the nurse's impact lasts much longer than the two and a half year relationship. Here's what's really dramatic. The children from these nurse family partnerships ultimately have lower teenage pregnancy rates. They have higher high school graduation rates. For every dollar spent in partnering a registered nurse for those first three years of life, it actually translates into about $6 that comes back into society in the end. That kind of long-standing partnership over time will increasingly be the relationship that individuals have with their registered nurse. A lot is changing, but still more has to happen. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation partnered with the Institute of Medicine to develop a report. And now we have this report that's come out from the IOM called The Future of Nursing, uh, Leading Change, Advancing Health. And there were actually 43 recommendations that came out in the report, but we put them in big categories. Education, practice, diversity, research. That report is not about nursing. It's about what nursing can do for the health of the public. If we say that nurses need a, a place at the table, at the boardroom, then we need to work with um, administrators and policymakers to help them understand um, that they need that nursing reality check. Experts want to see removal of many of the regulatory barriers that limit how nurses can practice. We have to be able to make the case with politicians that care should be delivered differently because they're the people that are gonna write the laws, write the regulations. Our policymakers really do need to listen to registered nurses. They need to listen to the voice of nursing through the American Nurses Association and the National League for Nursing and the several other nursing organizations. You know, she's just getting her nutrition through her belly full. For nursing to truly make a difference in transforming healthcare, everyone with a stake will have to work together. What's going to change healthcare is going to be partnerships with a lot of players. It, it will be uh, physicians, pharmacists, social workers, uh, a whole array of other people coming together to share a common goal. Open up real big. One of the more important groups that we're going to have to partner with is patients, with the consumers of healthcare. Other partners will be those who recognize how nurses can save on costs across the industry. And to any other community appointments that you need to get to. The nursing profession offers the most 
of any profession to enhancing and improving the health care of Americans at a price that is reasonable. The insurance companies are crucial to um, making better use of nurses and to getting better care out there. As the providers on the front lines, nurses will increasingly be seen as leaders in patient care delivery. You need to think about all those things. We have to not only redesign how we deliver care, but we have to think about how are we paying for care that supports this new delivery system. There's a lot of decisions being made in this country about health care and patient care delivery, and nurses need a greater voice in that. The call to action is wake up public. Yes, every year you vote us the most trustworthy profession. You say that you trust us more than any other discipline. But understand that we've got to be there in a way that's supported. We've got to be there in a way that we can really deliver the services that you need.